Pool fans checking in from around the world. Welcome to the 24th annual Derby City Classic. This is the largest pool tournament in the world. Behind me, over 500 players in each tournament. One pocket, banks, nine ball. In front of me, a super tight five by 10 diamond Bigfoot table. Then add to that 16 of the greatest players on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for some great pool action? We got two champions ready to go head to head. This is round one action, single elimination, and let's meet him right now. First up, he's a 2020 U.S. Open semifinalist, sponsored by Mez Q's, Kamui, JF Flowers Case, Side Pockets, and Caribou Billiards from Manila, Philippines. Make some noise for the bull, Jeffrey DeLuna. And his opponent is a world nine ball champion, 2022 Bigfoot International Open champion, and the 2022 all around Derby City champion. He's sponsored by QTech, Hex.com, Town, Diamond, and Jam Up Apparel. Please put your hands together from Moscow, Russia, Fedor Gorst. <laughs> Our referee is Mr. Ricky Bryant, now sending it up to Jeremy Jones and Mark Wilson in the AccuStats booth. Thank you, Derek. Hello and welcome, world-class 10 ball. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones here. Gorst and Deluna lagging. Jeremy, how do you see this one? Well, pretty high-powered, that's for sure. Gorst, uh, you can hear, has gained a lot of fans here at the Derby here the last few years. And Jeffrey Deluna, very exciting player, explosive break. Um, Got to give the edge to Fetter a little bit like you would most matches he plays, but he can't stumble much against Jeffrey. And it's been a minute, really, since we've seen Jeffrey in a, a, a big event, here in the U.S. at least. Good shot there of DeLuna. Always wears his hair spiked straight up. Mine sticks up that way after wearing his headset all day, too. I noticed I looked in the mirror like, good God. Yeah, it's the beanie <laughs> caps that does the worst for me, but... Uh, <laughs> But Feder, I was watching in practice. He has a variety of speeds on the break uh, for ten ball and nine ball, of course. But, yeah. But he was really unloading uh, while he, he was practicing. So we'll see. Much more than I, I, I really have seen any player so far. The balls have to be racked randomly, not the two and the three in the corner as it has been in the past. The ten ball does not win on the break. Race to eleven. No jump cues are allowed. All ball fouls. Yeah, and usually with a little longer bridge, he goes harder like that, little, you know, and he'll just be an inch shorter if he uses like no body hardly when he breaks the balls. And I kind of like that, especially on the 10 footer, something you don't practice the break as much. Mm -hmm. I think, believe it or not, the extra distance, you could lose the timing if you try to play a little more controlled. I kind of feel like not knowing it for sure, first match, why not? unload especially when you have that that weapon like he does now there's a question here and i don't know if we can grab the I overhead think it'll zigzag won't it well well uh, slide if, enough to get could, below if we, if we could grab the overhead i don't know if we can get it but if we can there there it is i'm, I'm wondering can he z yes, this zigzag, here yeah. but back down well the two know. has a pocket i mean it oh, does, if it does so he doesn't have to is, bank it yeah and the boy you get is, a fall good well, the thing is, if you try to get all the way underneath, that speed may not agree with the ball opening up right. off the second rail. It looks like it agrees getting to that tight pocket and maybe a cross-corner bank on the two. That's not bad. The only time that that shot works is when the cloth is super slippery, and he didn't even try for it. But you can see it really was sliding. You see what I mean? Had he hit that harder, we, he might have got where. I think he's going to just cross-corner this. I don't see the point in taking on uh, the tough pocket going away with some obstruction mm -hmm. on the nine you could get jacked up and let you don't want to put inside spin on this shot right and he's a great banker don't see him going for this small pocket here and i don't see him slow rolling it either mark a little pop here beautiful hit we oftentimes talk about Gorst growing up in moscow and playing on the diamond five by ten there at the pool room that he goes to is that was like his go-to table. So he's very comfortable playing on the 5 by 10 This is an unusual circumstance for all the rest of the players playing on the 5 by 10 Four and a quarter, four and eighth inch pockets. Yeah, I love the one real stun there. It's a shot, I think, under pressure. Uh, 
you know, that wasn't that bad, of course, but even stickier situations, it's a shot you got to learn. Because that two rails inside, trying to come inside the 6-9 or drawn behind, behind the 10, that can become pretty touchy. And Fetter showed it quickly here in the U.S. how great he was on the 5x10 at, what was he, 16, maybe yeah. seven, something like that. Yeah, he's 22 now, and he's been coming here. Been, he was formidable to begin with. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like he, he was just barely trying to learn to play or something. Yeah, I played at that room a couple years in a row there in Moscow. The Baza. Vladimir, a beautiful pool room. Never as well... I don't know about now, but up until then, which I think it had been open somewhere around four to five years. A little thick hit there, so he's going to come a little more angle on the eight, which isn't a problem. Just a little more of a cut shot. I think he feared maybe getting an awkward stretch if he kind of wrapped the mm -hmm. corner there. But um, anyways, pretty fascinating. He's never charged pool time. Oh, uh, really? When we were there, since the doors opened. And he has uh, quite a few different tables and quite a few of them. He has pyramid tables, three cushion tables, six by 12 snooker tables. And of course, probably eight or 10 nine foots. Ooh, I don't know if that one's going here maybe in a couple days. <laughs> Hit it a little bit rough, but it, uh, it did help work the cue ball a little bit closer to the nine. Well, and that's where I think the stroke saves shots at times, you know. If you kind of punch at that, get a little yeah. quick and hit it thick, you know, you really bobble that ball. Nice recovery. And the one thing about Fetter that I've noticed, the only change really, is I, I think he plays at a, a little quicker pace than he used to overall. Now, he'll take his time whenever he thinks the brain needs it, right? He needs to think something over. Rollouts, you know, tough positional shots. But I think he's gotten in a real comfort zone as far as pace around the table. A real comfortable break and run out. You win the lag, you set the tone. You know, now the other guy's got one bad lag. And uh, Fedor is warmed up, got a little momentum, got things going his way, comfortable in the table, the arena. Likes the way the break looked. Mm -hmm. uh, made Boy. two really nice opening shots on the one and the two ball bank. So, you know, all the little rest part of the recipes to get you some confidence to start a match, which he doesn't really lack in anyways, but it certainly doesn't hurt. No, when you get off on the right step and your confidence is up and you're feeling it and you're, and you're concentrating right, you don't have that static in your mind of, oh, gosh, I hope I don't struggle. Well, you know, maybe, you know, besides you could call it a couple few things otherwise, but... Maybe the biggest difference between the two players here is, you know, historically in both young careers, uh, Federer could leave the mistake behind a little better than Jeffrey. Uh, not say Jeffrey does it badly. That's just how great Federer is right. when he does rarely make a mistake. Right. That's what makes him partly so great. Now, the, the bull, he breaks from his fingertips and aims downward. He does get some hop on the cue ball quite a bit. Yeah, a lot of body. Oh, it took a lot off. Good he has a lot hit, more though. than that. Good square hit. Is the one going to not drop? Yeah. Oh, boy. And this is the thing. When wow. I saw him practicing, he did take some off. But mm -hmm. he really got the four-reeler going nicely. Um, but at that speed, you wonder if the four-reeler is really going to hold line. He got a kiss there. And this could hurt to start out, especially uh, getting to shoot more balls. I mean, Jeffrey hadn't got to got to try to pocket one yet. 20.5 mile per hour, our break demon. A little tricky coming out of the pocket here. Okay, not, not much at all. There's some funny shots here, though. The seven's a funny ball. The eight's not terrible, but you have mm -hmm. to get a pretty good positional play there. The six is on the other end. The five's out in the middle, so definitely some work here. And definitely got to make a decision here because, you know, do you draw back up? I guess uh, just not even monkey around with the I four. I think he spins above the four here. Okay, but then you're you're getting pretty far down table pretty easily. Maybe you can just go above there. You're yeah, right. like a stun no. spin. I shoot more of a rolling ball there with a hair of spin where he does like a little combination of both, I guess. He was trying to make sure he took the four out of it, because if you nick that four, then they can things can get real treacherous. But 
Well, the thing is, whenever you're playing on a slick table until you know otherwise, you're not sure the spin <coughs> is that responsive. And uh, mm, True story. And again, when you're close to the ball, that's where preference really comes in anyways because accuracy should be at a premium. Now, this is where Fetter's so good to stay disciplined playing for one of the lower corners using his stroke rather than trying to move for a side pocket. It just makes everything very natural. You don't worry so much. And, and I think it really kind of breeds confidence, Mark. You have to love his game, and he really made his mark here last year as the master of the table. He won the first two events, I believe it was the bank pool and the one pocket, and then naturally a decent run in the nine ball. That was a pretty profitable week for Mr. Gorst. Now, I don't think he was trying to get for the side pocket myself. He may have gotten a little thin for the corner, but to me, when I did spend some time on the 10-footer, on the which I had a couple little spells in different places, uh, when I didn't change my game as much as what I did on the 9-foot, mm -hmm. you know, as far as decisions, it seems like when I played my best on the 10-foot. And I kind of think Fetter does a lot of that also. He doesn't really run for the short shot. Mm -hmm. Still plays it like it makes sense. Now, it'd be surprising to me. He expected to get much more full if this ball is tight going by the seven. Right. So, possibly a missable ball here. Nice angle to comfortably transfer to the six. And in the audience, I see a most interested onlooker, uh, Federer's coach, Johan Rusink, the winningest Moscone Cup captain ever. Yeah, you play for the full here to draw back above the eight, or do you play for the little off angle to where you slide between the nine, ten, and play the eight up long? Uh, I think he's stunning forward to play the seven here. Yeah. Just get out. Yeah, and if he falls a little off angle, he'll just stun over. The eight does play on the side, I believe, from a little bit of an angle if it gets right on it. I think the corner's really the shot. But. Tremendous opening day audience here. The AccuStats Arena table. Yeah, lots going on with pool. And it's a very personal game as far as... Ooh, this one's gotten as about as funny as it could get. Yeah, anything but on the rail would have been better. Yeah, he's got to slow roll this. I think. He's looking to see if he maybe catches the point, shooting it up in the corner. Because when you, you know, you're hitting it lighter, it won't go through the ball quite as much. So it you think he'll stun down? I think he might stun down here. Like let it, no. let it go. No, he's going flat. Yeah, I thought he had to so slow he's top roll. Spinning. It's either a lot of speed or little speed. Nothing in the middle. Yeah, he went with the, with the head. Pretty, yeah. pretty hit. Wow. <laughs> His mental toughness, tremendous. Well, since day one, I've admired and respected uh, Mr. Gore's game. 22 years old and on top of the world, top of the pool world. And he did so with just hard work. Right behind his chair is Jason Sword, who's Fetter's biggest fan, clearly. Smiling and clapping, recognizing that Fetter has gotten off to a great start here. Leading the match 2-0. He's pocketed every ball thus far. Yeah, and, you know, like most sports, when a guy like Fetter comes along, of course there's some others, but Fetter's so impressive because of other disciplines, I think, as well. And not only that, changing tables. This last year, he played a lot of regional seven-footers, played great. Comes to the ten-footer, plays great. Does, it seems like it doesn't matter. <laughs> he figures it out. Mm -hmm. um, but what is kind of scary impressive is that's kind of what's coming for the future of pool, I think. Yeah, I think he's setting a bar to where mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of guys like him. And ladies as well. And it brings the youth into the sport because they identify with this guy. He's been around. He's established now. Well, it's yeah, not like he's a one-hit wonder. So. No, absolutely. And that's a real deal that these guys are making great livings, um, you know, getting to do what they love, even though it's still not easy. It's a lot of work. 
He always hits the rack so square. Gets tremendous ball action. Parks the cue ball. Nice. That's the four reeler I was saying that was going four. a lot during the practice. I One. saw him missing the sorry marker. I saw him missing the sides quite a bit, but the four reeler for both the guys was going quite a bit. Did you have the brake speed on? Yeah, I was trying to dunk on it. No, I monkeyed up my thing here. All right, type of angle. <laughs> you may just draw the cue ball out of off the one instead of chipping it. When you're coming across the spot-ish, it's kind of funny. 21.28 there from Fettergorst. Uh, our brake demon. It's a pretty cool tool. Yeah, and he's made two beautiful outs to start, and this one looks a lot easier to me. I mean, he's got to get on a tough three ball. Just because if he gets on the two nice, the three's not hard. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't pass the seven, and it doesn't pass the six, I don't believe. Boy, that's a good shot. Yeah. Got the cue ball close to the two, has some angle to work with, and now he can make up his mind what he wants to do. Yeah, can he kill it enough to come at soft two rails for the three in the side with right English on the new felt? I mean, it's a little tricky, like it might kind of come at the three a little bit. He could come two tight rails inside and play the three in, in the side pocket you know, I across where he's at. Like where he's looking now, Yeah, that's what it naturally kind of wants to do a little more. You just have to have a nice speed on the cue ball. Now, if he was twice the distance away, he couldn't do this. But since he's close, he can stun or kind of spin with a lot of control. Yeah, just like that. Float right into position. Look how good that speed is, too. Real reasonable. Yeah, and he's still got to work, though. That's why that ball in the center of the table is such a big ball, the 10. Because it comes into play a lot when you just get a little <laughs> funny. Like going by the 10 is a little funny. Going, you know, going between the 9, 10, very awkward. Can he go forward with a high inside two rails to kind of where the three's at now, Mark? It looks like the ten's in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think with a good stroke and, and more spin than speed, I think he can get through there. Oh, he played the other way, one rail. How's the speed? Just a hair off? Yeah, a little yeah. thin, a little finish. That's the type of shot, though, that you work with with drills. There's certain types of drills where that one tip stun. You know, something you're not going to think of very often yeah. rotation-wise, yeah. but it does come up. I love the carry he puts into every ball. It's not just this. It's a challenge for position, but it's the other balls, the more routine ones, too. He works exactly the same way. Yeah, that's the key, really, is uh, to treat him all the same. It just kind of makes you feel, gets you by yourself out there. Your mind doesn't wander because you got a little task you're doing mm -hmm. during your routine. It's like a long day of work. When you have nothing to do, your mind wanders. But when you're busy, mm -hmm. you just stay a little more focused. It's just kind of like I tell the, some people with Curry, Steph Curry. I know on a bet he can make about two or 300 in a row free throws. Oh, boy. If you're just tossing a ball shoot. Yeah. But yeah. he's still goes through that dribbling and everything else every time he's at the free throw line. Right. You know, it's, just, it's just what almost you can almost rely on it after a while. Your routine and Fetter Gorse always displays that. He missed his position by quite a bit here. So that means taking care of the cue ball on a tougher seven ball is not an easy task. I think he'll go all the way past the eight rather than try to stay on that same side of the table he's on now. Yeah, and a little fortunate that the eight's a, a pretty playable ball from a lot of places. If the eight's a little tucked away and you get short there, mm -hmm. things could be funny. Great recovery shot. He's got to cheat the side pocket just a little bit if he's going to draw it. I don't know if he can do it. I think he can, but he may go forward. Is he playing the corner here? No way. Right? No, it looks like he might be. Well, no, no, we know he's going to the side because yeah. he's going above the center. Down to the other end of the table. Oh, yeah. You could cheat it quite a bit. Uncomfortably done. And that's another one of the shots that the 10-footer, you feel a little better about just coming one clean rail by the 10, not worrying about scratching because you have a little more room to come down. It's always a little nervy when you have to come down one side of the table, one rail. Easily seems like there's a magnet 
from that corner pocket. Was well, Jeffrey going to get to shoot here, Mark? <laughs> uh, wow. Perfect pool cool so far. The first three Edward games. Gorst has a three two break and run lead. outs now for Gorst. Yeah, and Aluna will have battle. the break. That's a heck of a As we start. move into rack four. Like to send a shout out to listing back in St. Louis, Alan Oliver, former Linda Wood star player, loves pool. Glad to have you aboard. Jim Kuhn, back in Topeka, Kansas. Glad you're here. And Carl Baum, who'll probably be here later this week. Yeah, be surprised if Carl didn't show up. He's busy this time of the year, though. I guess he's probably always busy. Yeah. Yes, he is. Great dude. All right. Jeffrey's been down 3-0 before. And really, I mean, does he change the break a little bit, Mark? I mean, I know it's early. You don't want to go from what you kind of warmed up with, too, you know, away too quickly. But, I mean, seeing Fetter smash him, he can yeah. smash him. Yeah. With the Luna, though, that downward hit, sometimes his cue ball gets loose. That's the problem. You know, it's, it's bouncing, and then something kisses it, and then it's yeah. off the table. Or, well, the thing is, he doesn't have to go to 100% to get a lot of power. He, yeah. he possesses a ton of power at, uh, you know, 70%. I feel like kind of like his last one was off a little bit. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to see the best one, you know, right. for 20 mile an hour or whatever it was. But I think he feels the same way, too. I think he wants to see before he, he switches. Better, yeah. yeah. We always have our little favorite place. Let's just see what happens Yeah, that's there. what he wanted. That's not even close to his max. Not even close. And, oh, an unfortunate, but uh, a great break with an unfortunate result. Yeah, pool's amazing. He hasn't got to shoot yet. Breaks him. Look how open the center of the table is, and he ends up on top of the one. Now the lefty, can he kind of bank the one down and kind of nip him behind the three here, Mark? Is he trying to thin this? Wow. This may end up behind the 10. I think that's this where he's trying to go. This can go in the side go. pocket, too. you got to be careful uh, of that. Yeah. You were right, Mark. That, I don't know about that one. It looked a little tough. Yeah. Of course, he didn't hit it how he imagined or how he wanted, but I thought he may consider banking the one down. Just kind of soft draw behind the three. Get the one by the two, maybe. Now, Fetter should come between the two, three, not really flirt with the other side of the table. May need a touch of inside English. Deluna on the break demon, 21, six, zero, six, 21 miles an hour. Queuing pretty high here with a little inside English. Uh, he hit it thick, so he's going to come at the two, and he's not very happy about it. So we're going to probably see Jeffrey come back to the table. Now, you want to pinch him behind the 10 for the devastating safety here, but that may just lean towards getting him behind the 7, banking the, the 2 up table. You know, no jump mm -hmm. cues, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's pretty natural. And this is don't worry about the 2 going all the way down. That's why the cue ball escaped. You can't worry about the two going all the way down. You have to realize how big the eclipse is. You just going behind the seven. Well, his ball speed on the two was impeccable. So it's yeah, but just imagine if he concentrated on the cue ball, how impeccable it would. Have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, pretty sure he would have hit his mark. Still a tough recovery here for Deluna from this long range and two on the rail. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, he lost that one. He may get fortunate here. Backdoor safety behind the nine, maybe? No. Nope. And he's opened up the five now, so big problems for Jeffrey. Well, distance is your friend when you're playing safe. If you can't leave it perfect, it'll just get them long, and they can make a mistake, and maybe you come back to the table with something slightly better. Well, he's uh, the hard work in the rack, the five nine that was sitting pretty ugly is now open. He can cue the ball. Little distance on the three, not a big deal for Fetter. And I think that shot on the two we were talking about, the safety mark, mm -hmm. it seems like to me when you're close to it, 
it just doesn't kill as well. Like the cue ball doesn't develop as well with the inside. Mm -hmm. Like if he's a little further away, it's almost like it develops yeah. in a different manner as it goes to the two where it takes more of that spin, you know. So Right. And or I you can play both balls. You know? To get that speed, your cue ball's not truly rolling at impact on there like right. it would be when it's further away right, right. to get the speed right. And so that's why, you know, I think it opens up a little bit more, has a little more speed to it. Oh, he's going to love this. This is perfect where he's full enough, plus has enough easy angle to move it and not have to deal with the nine at all. He didn't try to pick up a few more inches by drawing and digging in, but rather just accepting what the table would routinely give him, adding to his consistency rate. Yeah, and really recognizing it was kind of perfect also. That's the beauty of it, really. Now I'll let this one out. No reason to baby it. Clean hit. Now it'll just be top spin one rail. Eh, I can't tell the angle exactly. This type of shot, you really don't want to have to check it with a hair outside if you're going forward. If you can go with straight high, for yeah. sure. Well, yeah. well, we'll be able to tell here. But yeah. worst comes to worst, if you're straight, you can just stop the cue ball there. It's not a problem that way yeah. because you're on the right angle. It was straight high. And you're never going to put inside and flirt just to get a little better. So No, no. No, you can't take that risk on. Yeah, and this is where Fetter, really smart on not worrying about working a little more on the nine. Just to be able to hit, shoot the eight how he wants. Mm -hmm. Like, he can kill the cue ball here, but I wouldn't doubt if he doesn't and takes a little more angle on the nine like this. And just understand, nothing wrong with coming across. You know, if you get that angle that's too much, just just work a little harder. Yeah. And and what happens there is he gets to shoot a lot of shots in that medium zone, knowing, you know, what's he going to do with nine again here about medium, unless he decides to not come across. So it's a little bit of a fooler at times, just because he gets to do a lot of the same things over and over and over, like right there. Mm, that gorgeous. wasn't light. That wasn't hard. That was just right. Out in the middle. So Jeffries broke twice and had one attempted safety in four games, Mark. Yeah, it's been all feather so far. Four zeros our score. Horse takes that down and extends his lead. Four games are done, and he'll be breaking in rack five. So what's the odds the one ball's within six inches of this corner pocket down here <laughs> after this break shot? Yeah, when you hit them square and you hit them consistent, then the balls tend to go similar places. Yeah, and it seems the triangle, especially the ten ball triangle, seems to avoid a lot of kisses with the object balls when you hit them well. well he missed it a little bit. Yeah, the one's pretty close to that corner. But he didn't make one, I don't think, anyways. And he left a tough one ball, even though it's hanging, to get. Yeah, Jeffrey's going to have to long rail kick this one in and take one heck of a shot on the two. Now, hmm. he, could, he could make the one with the six and figure out a place to roll out on the two but and, and challenge maybe. The four nine's tough, right? This is a tough rack. So maybe, you know, reconsider mm -hmm. some things instead of the kick shot on the one. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys, I wouldn't say overlooked, but sometimes just mm -hmm. just don't think that you can roll out and, and, and pocket that one. Well, you know, the other thing here is if you make the one, it's like you did. Don't scratch. Okay, if you make the one. You're trapped. Right? But maybe you're playing the play safe here. 
because the four nine is tough. The three is not easy to get on. Yeah. So don't force something here that's not here. Don't try to be a hero because even if you make a tough two with a tough three, you're still not getting out most of the time. Right. That's what I say. You're going to bring your opponent to the table. And right. If you pocket the one, you can kind of move the cue ball a little more where you want. You may not get it back, but. And I can see the value of pocketing the one because now that makes, you know, if you can get a safe from here, and maybe you can't. But if you can, that's probably the best play. And this is a, oh, what a uh, shot. Man, incredible shot at that speed. I'll tell you. One slight miss hit and you scratch there. Yeah. You, you realize, I mean, well, you could, it, could, it could warp on a new felted table even if you hit it well. That's the type of shot, right. just because it hugs and just kind of changes some direction a little uh, bit. So how it hits the pocket, they can still scratch behind yeah. it. You know, so does he take on the three, trying to use the eight to hold the ball? I mean, I don't see any future in the in the shot. Otherwise, really, maybe him kiss off the eight coming backwards. Maybe is he going two rails behind the four? All right, try to use the eight to to maintain for the combo. A little bit painting himself into the corner, <laughs> and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. No, yeah. Nothing was easy ever, even playing safe, like I said, maybe on the two, or you're saying maybe pocket the one on the push out. And there's never anything going to be easy here. Is he playing the nine or just safe? Yeah, just he's safe. trying to not make the nine. Yeah. Yeah, and he's giving up. He yeah. wanted to let the nine hold the cue ball, but good chance you make the nine if if you if you flirt there right so big wall of balls it's going to come back with the cue ball most likely now do you do you just float off the four putting the four maybe by the opposite head spot and spinning back to the end rail do you double bank this trying to shove the cue ball a little bit double bank i okay. think it plays easier when you try to float this one it's easy for it to get away from you yeah, double bank. Yeah, and that way, no, it didn't turn out perfect, but no, you can see the value. Good. Yeah. yeah, you can see the value. You got distance that was very controllable. If you go thin on that ball, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, to include scratching. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of guys overhit that as well, lose a little line. You could see he really floated that four under right. position along with the cue ball. So, and the I'll, nine protects the bank. I mean, even if you sell out the four, you, the bank is no good. Yeah, he's got a maybe curve this a touch because he's got to dive down a little bit not a lot but a little bit okay nice hit very square hit oh, something he needed as well yeah now this <laughs> has got a little angle so this hasn't gotten super easy i don't think he may be able to pinch it back but then he's stretching as a lefty i think we're gonna see inside spin which is a real pretty two rail position play long rail in rail Wow. I don't know if is we he, will get we enough get the overhead? Will it get enough gas on it? I think he, he's, he's trying He's going to, around him three rounds. Is he? Yeah, I uh, think okay. so. Watch out for yeah, the we'll scratch. See. Watch out for the scratch where the five's at. Oh, you're right. You're he's right. going to be okay. Good though. job. Perfect speed. Good job. Boy. If this doesn't slow down. He's not out of the woods. There's a combo and a funny seven ball to get on here. But a great shot from where he was at to get around the table and have any angle at all on the six and have it be very makeable. Now, it's still possible to miss the six because you're trying to maneuver the cue ball with power. It looks like you'll two cushions back with draw. Speed is the real key when you got to power up on the slick table or are you going to hit the speed right? And he may have hit the speed right for that side pocket. That was kind of odd. Did he put mm -hmm. like an inside on he that had to. or something like yeah. that? Or straight draw was it maybe? I don't know. That was an odd the way the cue ball hooked, he, he, huh? I think he was trying to hit straight draw, and I think he accidentally got a hint of inside yeah. because it really checked up off that second cushion. Now he's, but he can still do this. He just takes a good shot here. Speed's going to end up playing right. Okay. Got it down. Overcut, so that usually costs you a little bit on the cue ball. Right, the cue ball ran another foot and a half due to the fact they hit the thin side of the pocket as opposed to the heart that he was anticipating. Big shot here. Can't overlook these. Super long bridge. Guess he's drawing. Yeah, he felt better that way. Funny stretch here. He may go righty. Got 
interesting. We see another player that's a lefty, though, using the bridge righty. His fellow yeah. countryman, Roberto, does the same thing. Huh. And he's a lot like Boosty, quite a bit away from the, with the, from the cue ball with the tip. Most of the time with the bridge, you want to learn to bring the tip pretty close to the cue ball. Not crazy close, but Bustamani, he's amazing. He's like 10, 12 inches away from the cue ball with the bridge. And good. he's actually very good with the bridge. Good work there by Jeffrey DeLuna. Yeah, big kick shot there. Yeah, big out there, really, to break the balls in game six as well. He can get right back in this match. Put a little heat on Fetter, even though it never seems like he feels any heat. <laughs> and the funny thing is, when he was younger, I, didn't, I wouldn't say that. I saw that at times, you know, I saw him play at Moscone Cup. That, Of course, it was an odd Moscone Cup with the pandemic and whatnot. You know, it was a, it was a little different, but... Um, he, he looked more human back then, so his middle game's pretty strong. Yeah, and getting better. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Roberto said, imagine having to fade this guy for the next 30 years, you know. <laughs> but it's raising the bar. Everybody's going to have to train harder now to keep up or get left behind. There's Tyler Steyer now in the arena to watch. Here's a couple open seats around, but not that many. Well, both these guys have a lot of fans. Jeffrey, very entertaining player. Very charismatic at the table. That's the connection he wants. Oh, an awful kiss on the on the one now the cue ball was back but the one was in a great direction from a great hit on the on the rack I don't think he passes here but we'll see I think he attacks like this is what I mean as far as like you can't really let the table change you a whole lot mm -hmm. you gotta feel you can knock these balls in and, and uh, keep Feder in his chair there is a reward the two's open with the three hanging he can cue the ball Luna, 21.5 miles an hour on that break. Yeah, and if he wanted to go with a high ball here, I wouldn't blame him at all, really. Take his chances with the cue ball a little bit. Pretty like, shot. Yeah, I like that. What a shot that was. I thought, Man. Yeah, perfect, and he deserved that cue <laughs> ball there. On a scale of 10, 1 through 10, that was a 10 right there. It's not just the difficulty of the shot, but the position play. You've got to hit the right amount of stun to get it to respond that way. It doesn't naturally want to go where it ended up. You had to manufacture that part of it, too. Yeah, and I thought for those guys, it was a little more comfortable than the draw, maybe. But especially mm -hmm. the Filipinos really play those types of shots a lot because of the conditions they grow up on. We played a lot of those in Houston as well, just because the tables were so tough and mm -hmm. slow and hard to draw the ball. Now he needs to capitalize here, and he's got the rack to do it. Here you just slowly come across kind of at the six. And cue ball just falls right in there where you want it. Nice little angle to work with. He'd like to get that same angle. He'd like to get the cue ball right back where it's at right now. He's got to think of being lefty, though. That a part, bit. too. That's true. Yeah. All right. Plays great for a righty, but not maybe so much. Oh, he oh, overcut it. And that's what I was saying. He's got to capitalize here on the, <laughs> these types of uh, mm. racks, especially after what a great opener. And it looks like he's dialed in the break a little bit after that opening break. I think he had his mind on the cue ball a little bit there, Mark. Uh, oh, for sure. Look at where the cue ball's at. He got the perfect angle. Yeah. 
You know another thing, too, like if you're gorsed, okay? You know an unforced error has occurred after a guy's kind of starting to get a little momentum, and you know if you can put these last five balls away, it really hurts their psyche, you know? Do you do you think he ever thinks like that? Like, I really got to want to cash this. I mean, not that you don't want to win anyway, but I'm uh, saying. Uh, you know, it you may know, not be those conscious words, but, yeah, he's got that. Umph, you know, or whatever you want to call you, it, you know. You know the psychological effect. I mean, kill a killer instinct. Right, I mean, yeah. It's just, killer instinct is what makes him practice all the time as well. I mean, those things all go hand in hand, I think. You know, because there's, there's, there's not favorites over there. You know, all those players have the same opportunity, and Fetter's the one that continually put in the time and, right. and whatnot. Because that mistake can easily cost you two or three games. Uh, I mean, it's for sure. If, it, if Gorse gets out, it's for sure at least two games difference because you would have had one and you gave one. Yeah, I'm curious how he plays this. I like, I mean, it looks like he's going to go downward. Usually, no, he's going forward. Okay, I would creep this two rails. Don't really try to get a ton. Oh, he played the stun. Okay. It's hard with Fetter sometimes because when he hits, he's hitting below the equator. He won't mm -hmm. go any lower than the equator when he starts, and then he drops the tip on the last stroke. A lot like the older school players, I think. More of the guys today come up with the tip much lower, below where they really want to strike. Good look there. As Gorst has the cue right down the middle of his chin. Yeah, and he's, you know, the one thing psychologically that, you know, not saying you're going to think at every match you play Gorse, but you know it in the back of your head. He's convincing these guys they really can't afford hardly any mistakes if they expect to win. Yeah, Gorse is not going to beat himself. Yeah, they can win, but they just got to play really right. well. Right. And know that he's going to play great, so that means you got to play just your yeah. very best game. There was a handful of those players in every generation that, you know, that carried throughout the fields, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's all gorgeous so far. Five to one in front. He's like a machine. I mean, more, you know, we always joke around when guys are machine, but he really is machine like. I mean, there's detached emotions and the serious structure to his swing and thought pattern and eye pattern and the setup pattern and just on and on and on. Yeah, and the batteries don't seem to run out either. Uh, Machine-like as far as that. I, I always talk about the first time I met him here and he was only 16. He played his Bigfoot match and then he sat in the crowd and watched another match on his phone while watching the next match. I mean, yeah. he's going to school and studying simultaneously to playing at the highest level at 16 years old. So Yeah, that's what I, I was talking about. I think it was us in the first match yesterday, how strong it is when you're out here competing, trying to win, of course, being an incredible player, and also very, very aware of learning. You know, that's, mm -hmm. most of the guys say, all right, I'll, I'll learn when I get back home or, or you know, yeah. you know, now yeah. let me compete. The no, smart ones do both, I guess. I've always loved everything about his game. All right. Definitely not 100%, but not holding back. Oh, he mishit that one a little bit. You could actually see the cue stick go a hair left, his left. Looked like he tried to ramp up the power just a smidgen that time, too. Yeah, and, you know, he didn't hold his paws at the cue ball quite as long as he normally does. True uh, that. So that normally makes you take off a hair quicker. And then one thing about Fetter that is something I've learned watching him and kind of relearned in a manner, but he doesn't always have a perfect backswing. You know, no one can. We're human. But he always commits to impact and goes through. And, and that's a big key one. Uh that is a big tool so when he gets a little quick and here's a replay watch the cue stick go well that wasn't too bad but he definitely didn't hold the pause as long as he normally does and so get a little quick you accelerate off of it just a little miss hit on the cue ball and and that miss hit the hop also took away some of the power it was just at 20.8 miles per hour so he got a little odd here what he's thinking is top and side's kind of heavy. 
And this mm-hmm. is where he's got to not worry. I mean, he wants to get the natural angle, and if he can stun two rails, that's great. Or one rail up is what I like, going in between the seven, nine, one rail, like that. I think that was pretty easy. Beautiful. But again, another rack. You know, I'm not going to say it too often, but it seems like a lot. We say it with Gorse. Feels like a kind of got to get out rack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't get many second chances. Yeah, and you overcut one. This is the type of one when you miss, it's a hair thick. Don't expect to miss, though. Ooh, almost overcut that one. He's going to have a mean stretch here, being the lefty. Which Jeffrey will kind of contort his body and <laughs> mm -hmm. whatever he needs to do to get at this cue ball. It's pretty natural, though, low, low right English. The ball should grab plenty enough. The five's not right on the rail. It's a good two inches off. This is all about just give it time to grab. You could stay above the side if you wanted. Cut the seven. Going righty. He's going, and he's coming backwards. Oh, boy. And this is where he got the cut anyway, so he may survive this rack. Hmm. <laughs> Now, there's a time where four and an eighth inch pockets helped you. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> Which the sides aren't four and an eighth, but they are tighter than normal. You get my point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're probably four and three quarters. Yep. Yeah, we measured them last night exactly I, four and three quarters. Think, yeah, that would be my guess. Okay, this is all speed, of course, but you got to commit to the stroke. Nah, he's overcut it. It's lost the cue ball as well. Uh, the cue ball survived, so this is going to be a little awkward. But this is one that usually Federal will go ahead and draw the ball, not really want to come off any kind of funny manner. Like, kind of like where he's in control of what happens. Mm -hmm. We'll see how well he hits it. Don't know if we can grab the overhead, but yeah, the pull air. the ball a couple rails there. Yeah. We didn't, but he's going to go two cushions around, looks like. About a half ball hit, it looks like. Well, yeah, with yeah, a little he's bit of going draw. downward, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've got to have a little backspin because the top spin makes him want to hug down there. Yeah. Yeah, about a half ball. It's a great hit. Speed should be pretty good. And again, like all the greats, even though this, you know, looks something, I wouldn't say routine, but not like something you have to think about a ton. He really calculates what's the best play on all these kind of easier layouts. Not saying this is an easy shot by any means, but you know he's not doing anything crazy. But does he go two rails, one rail? Ah, it may end he up on the two. 50 there. I think that's twice that he didn't really hold the pause that, like, I'm used to seeing from him at the cue ball. Well, this is plenty tough here. There's nothing easy about this. I think he just, he'll end up, this is a funny three rails to me. <laughs> that's uh, what I'm saying. I would just come across and from above the side, take the shot on the 10 in the same corner as the 9. Just kind of one rail, maybe a soft two rails. It's depending a, on how you want to hit it. A risk and reward assessment is being performed right now by the robot. And this is where the smaller pocket really comes into play. A little bigger pocket, you can create a little more angle coming off the nine to go three rails. If you're drawing to go three rails, you have to refrain from trying to hit the ball heavy to create enough angle to get past the side pocket. You're going to have to go for the middle of the pocket. because uh, He's got to go before the side, head. doesn't he? Well, I'm Looks saying like a he, lot of cut oh, to me. Okay, well so maybe he's too much do, cut. For yeah, that. he's going to do the shot we talked about, just coming across. Just go across and take it from above the side pocket. Yeah, just remember how great yep. you are, right? Just a spot shot here. Yeah, he makes us uh, look at shots a little differently than if you and I were at the table, maybe, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> oh, doubt. Just a little spot There'd shot be from a know. tremendous trepidation. What <laughs> we'll be feeling at this juncture. <laughs> Okay, just like he does in some other events where they have some spot shot shootouts. Nice high ball. 
Good pause. Pretty smooth transition. And he connected with the heart of the pocket. Yeah. Well, that was a nice out. 6-1 is our score. Yeah, Jeffrey, I think, is going to take his time out. And I certainly would not begrudge him that. That would be the appropriate moment to take it. Yeah, we got a short player break here going on. Now, Jeffrey, I think he's figured the break out pretty well. He hadn't been so fortunate on the break. He got on top of the one during yeah. one of them. And then he came with that great shot last time. My yeah. goodness. So I think he does about the same on the break, somewhere in between 20 and 21 with a good little pop. Here we go. Now he's missed uh, the two balls in the side, which to me haven't been the most consistent ones. And again, he's inches from the one and not really much of a shot yeah. <laughs> offensively anyways. And, and a hard stretch no matter what he does. Well, this can definitely happen. Just because you make a ball in the break doesn't mean you always get a shot. And that's why when you look at the results from the Moscone Cup and you see that the top five elite players on both sides are breaking or running out in the Moscone Cup at a rate of 30%, I doubted that it could be that high. And then after watching over the last 12 years, by golly, it is because you have to make a ball in the break. Number two, you have to get a shot. And number three, you can't mess up. I mean, a lot yeah. of things got to go right. Look how often this happens to you, where you make a ball in the break and get something like this. Yeah, all speed control here. There's a few gaps there between the nine, uh, eight, five, and the two, and wow. I think he's done pretty well. <laughs> Fantastic. So this will be a funny Fantastic. three rail kick behind the nine, just above the six off the side cushion. Oh, I, Actually, I like going at it. I, I, I like. I don't know if we oh, can get really? the overhead. I would go the three overhead. Rails this behind. plays great here. You can go here, here. You just got to come in short. But a lot of things happen from here because the one yeah. ball can filter over here. Because okay. going in behind it, boy, this. Yeah, but you could stick them. It lays. You just got to ignore the nine. Really, the nine's not really in the any path coming behind. So, and with a high ball, kind of a medium speed, it's pretty easy to stick them here. I mean, you got to judge it now. Oh, he would decide to go one rail. That had some value, and it's certainly going to pay off. Wow. <laughs> well, we're not going to discount that quality effort that will be the right shot yeah does he come one rail into the eight possibly an edge on the five here kind of simplifying the two? Oh yeah and yeah, this is the, the thing you know when you're going into a ball you don't have to hit it so easy remember that right. you can put a little more speed because you're using the ball anyways the other part of this is it's zero chance if you hit this ball decent to get below the five. So you don't have to worry about that. So sure. whether you, you know you don't have to say, well, I got to hit this. If you hit the five or the eight, it works out okay. And I think hitting the thin five, or the five thin is the only real worry. If you if, use pace. Yeah, if you go by the, uh, and you don't have to use a lot of pace, but right. I wouldn't say baby it is all. Don't no, you know no. that way you hit the ball how you want. And it lets the two ball uh, glide off the rail easier if you Absolutely. go a little pace. If you try to baby it in there, sometimes it bounces away. Looks like he's queuing up pretty decent, but i got to believe he's still rolling the ball. No? He decided to play more of a, a, a an attacking shot. And, and of course, kind of like I talked about with Dennis, you know, if you're playing a video game, you'd be like, okay, I'm going to shoot this in, draw two rails over here. And, you know, but these guys don't back down. When they think that's the correct shot, mm -hmm. they'll say, mm -hmm. it's on me to do this. It's not so much the incorrect mm -hmm. shot. So <laughs> You and I are just trying to simplify oh, it a little gosh, bit. Gosh, yes. Oh, I got a blocker ball here. I'm yeah. using that right away. <laughs> okay, nothing friendly again for Jeffrey. He's got to spin this a lot. Easy to let up because you want to get it to take. Nice hit. Nice hit. A little bit of a reward, it looks like, unless the six is playable. And it's close. The six, not terrible. All right. Super tough shot, nevertheless. But uh, now it's a scorable shot as opposed to it could have easily been unscorable. Well, the thing is, what I mean, what do you like for a safety? Nothing. Uh, no, yeah. there's nothing here. Uh, they're long and tough. 
Yeah, and I don't know if he's shooting the combo. A lot of times he'll size up the hit from the two to the six mm -hmm. a little more than what he did here. Yeah. I was just going for the long rail bank outright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the two's going to get a little funny, or is it, did it go enough to make it easy on the mm -hmm. side? And he's got to go three rails with inside here. If he's, yeah, he may be able to cut it and come one rail by the seven and just take a little cut on the three. Nothing wrong with that. Like if he wanted to shoot outside, that would certainly play easier than trying to go inside. Still got to cut the three quite a uh, the two quite a bit to avoid the seven if you're using right spin. Oh, he came behind it. What a he, shot! He hit it heavy though. He got a lot of yeah. that. <laughs> well, he, he, he rattled the side, so he hit it way heavier. He would have. You know, been into the eight, but it was all good. It's, I'm not criticizing the shot because it was a hard shot. Yeah, but no buts really. Uh, commending him to really, I looked thin to really attack with the mm -hmm. cue ball there to me. Jeffrey, though, a very aggressive player. Yeah. It's a commonly missed ball, and, and, and don't get me wrong, these guys aren't going to miss it very often, but for balls that are missed, for some reason, drawn a little jacked up, just kind of <laughs> tightens that pocket up a bit. Well, and elevated so you don't foul, and I mean, there's a lot of complicating factors there that makes that, and then four and eighth inch pocket, let's not forget that. Well, and it seems like to me, if you're off with the timing a little bit to me, because you don't get the tip as low, that you send the cue ball away sliding a little bit more to me, and it, and it becomes a makes the object ball hair more grabby to the pocket uh, uh, just a touch yeah no doubt there's there's so many complicating factors there that yeah like hit, watch watch him hit this now the thing to watch is watch the rotation on the five almost immediate overspin even if he's stunning it almost immediate overspin and that's why it's squeezed in he didn't hit it perfect but the ball's spinning over so it makes the pocket want to take the ball a little bit more. If you hit a flat cue ball there, totally flat, mm -hmm. that object ball sliding, which makes it want to bobble, similar to the shot that, uh, that Jeffrey had on the three. All right, just one rail to the short side. Oh, he's stunning. Because the seven did pass the ten. And these are these medium length shots that are a little off angle and they're far more missable in uh, 10 foot table play than they are in 9 foot table play. Well, uh -huh. I don't think he has much angle here and he's going to have to cut the 9 a little bit. Don't see him queuing down on this ball at all. Just take what you can get on the nine, which is yeah. the, the overhead that we have shows us the nine's very playable. Yeah, this is the ball. This is a tougher shot than the nine. <laughs> by far. Just want to get this down. Fetters, you could argue if you just broke down a bunch of categories that, that are players as good or if not better in some categories or maybe all of them. But as far as a collective package, it's it's uh, he's definitely ahead at the moment. In every area, he's above pro average. Right. Every area, safety, kicking, uh, mental toughness, break, yeah. jumping. I mean, and there's not one category he's lead. sub pro average seven games to one and so he's even right at the top of that category for sure jumping would be one of them nine. even though we're not jumping with jump cues in this event yeah well the stuff we don't see also i think he's way up there the stuff we don't see in the arena we, uh, you know his training and well one of, uh, one of the things that i was thinking of that went along with what you're saying about his training is that when you have made a you know, plan to win and prepare to win and practice to win, then you feel like, I deserve to win. Yeah. No, because if you go there and think, well, maybe I can stumble through and still win, but in the back of your mind, you know you haven't. You don't have that commitment. You don't have that conviction. 56 balls pocketed, 
only four errors, 9.33. That's, that's the highest mark of the day by far at this juncture of the match. Yeah. Seven to one is our score after eight games. You, you know, and when you start off like that, you're set up to, to for the TPA to go down a little bit is what mm -hmm. it does. But mm -hmm. you got, it'd be a hard bet to think he's going to end below 9.30. And the thing that I see with Fetter, and of course I haven't been around his training as much as I was at one time, um, is I watch a lot of guys do drills and stuff. They post things and whatnot. And the thing, the difference I see is, is, is the the quality of his routine, even in drills from shot to shot. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times when you get multi-ball drills, you can start to just shoot a ball and oh, let me just shoot from where it lays mm -hmm. again instead of getting really into every mm -hmm. shot. Where He's a big difference uh, when it comes to that. Well, you see a lot of sloppy practice out there. Guy hits three balls and looks at his phone for five minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, and then they call that hours of practice. That's not really. That's, right. that's not what's going to get it. But, I mean, you know, I see some great players post some amazing drills, but they kind of, you know, mm -hmm. maybe don't get into the routine, just kind of like get down. Their talent really gets them incredibly through the drill. and um, But the quality of, of – of what you see Fetter do from day to day is uh, pretty incredible. Darren Appleton said it best, never be lazy around the table. Yeah. And he posts some of the toughest drills. My goodness. <laughs> Watch him do that. Is he going three or just a soft one rail lightly? Yeah, he's going three rails. He's going to catch a little traffic maybe. Oh, he's running good. Hmm. Playing good, running good, Mark. Because that certainly wasn't the route. He wanted to come between the 210 off of three rails. Mm-mm. But he was aware that there was a certain percentage of the time he's going to come out okay, and he feels like he can defend himself if it doesn't. Yeah, well, if you notice, he overcut the one to the pocket, so the right English he applied grabbed a little early. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I brought it up earlier, even when things aren't perfect, he always commits at impact getting through, and it's, uh, you rarely see him let up. Is this a stun? No, two cushions. Yeah, that with, with the inside. inside, yeah. Boy, that's a good shot. Now, that is a delicate because it was way out here wide. It's not like it was laying like a snake along the rail there. you got to manufacture all that. Yeah, it's that fine line. If you let up, you're dead. And if you overhit, it kind of hugs and doesn't get there either. Oh, yeah. yeah. To have the speed right on that? Oh, my goodness. you got to hit that so pure, and you better be playing 10 hours a day with focus. Yeah, and even more than speed, it's almost like having the right release on the cue ball. You know, like it's just like a funny, almost like mm. a drag shot when it turns over, when you, you know, having command of that, you know. No, you, you hit the nut right there. That, that is exactly where it's got to be, and it only comes from putting in those hours. That's right. That's why a lot of players, um, you know, when you try to make a little changes with them to improve them into that kind of stroke, something that maximizes what's going on, um, at first, it's a little difficult just because, um, you know, like I said, he plays a lot of those stuns almost like a, like a filler where the mm -hmm. ball releases nicely. It's like a light stun that mm -hmm. you get a ton out of, and that takes a lot of reps. It's kind of like one of those, and I'm not a golfer, so I can't, but there's like in-between shots, like yeah. a, a half a nine iron or something like that. It's, that's what that type of shot is. And it doesn't come up all the time, so you tend to not practice all the time. And then it's not glamorous to practice because you look bad. But then you look great when you can produce it. And it's just what happens is you just develop a lot of trust. You know, you envision it and then just kind of trust the, the, the arm's going to do it. And a uh, little funny here. You could slow draw this back underneath two rails towards the center, maybe getting a little angle going away from the nine, but that's not bad. Could do a little inside English here as well. Looks like he's going to play this with a hair check. Just try to get by the 10. Oh, he did come too. That's the original shot I was talking about. But he's a little bit going away from the 9 right now. Well, 10 ball, I think. You know, of course, you got to be pretty witty with the cue ball in position and stuff like that. But because of the break shot, and most players really at least getting a break that's pretty formidable, right? I mean, they're maybe mm -hmm. not all like Shane or Fetter or whatever, but most players have come to where they can break the balls playing 10 ball. It really is a uh, more of an efficient game. Like if you're really efficient mm -hmm. and, 
and that's something you can definitely label fetter <laughs> efficient because the balls don't tie up very often if you're breaking them good mm -hmm. you don't get a ton of like you know right goofy goofy racks right so and not saying these guys can't handle them you can, it's obvious with the new nine ball rules right you get a lot more funny situations it seems like Yeah, quality wreck there. Gorsuch All stings his lead down to seven yeah. games. Jeffrey DeLuna will have the break as we head into rack 10. 943, yeah. moved his TPA up 10 points late in the match. It's so much easier to go the other direction. <laughs> yeah, and Jeffrey, you know, he's getting really punished. Uh, you know, he hasn't had the best of luck off the break overall. He's made a few mistakes, and of course, he's a, a professional. He would tell you this match so far is on him, but then he's got a Fetter Gorse that's followed him uh, playing perfect. So, yeah. It's just a culmination of some things that have gotten us to the score at 8 to 1. As far as Fetter's concerned, I mean, this, you know, if we lose Jeffrey, he's got a lot of pool left. Things will change for him as the week goes. But that's the funny thing about Fetter is it doesn't look like, or when he's playing, it doesn't look like it's going to change much as far as what Fetter's going to do. Yeah. It'll change better for, uh, for the better for Jeffrey, for sure. Definitely going to be a threat. He's going to try and make a threat in this match. Three ball's going to get a kiss. Did the four railer down. Just as we talked about, and the ball's not tying up, the 5-9 gets really ugly. <laughs> the one's not a shot. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to try and chop the one back on the four and come two rails maybe. He's got a two and seven that are kind of working for him as well. Uh, he let it hug a little, but he's going to be okay. It's pretty nice, actually. <laughs> Did the eight cut off the kick shot? If, if the eight cut off the kick, he may have to swerve between the ten and eight, maybe. This is not going to be an easy shot yeah, here. Not at all. And it looks like the eight. And if you have to swerve between the eight and ten, mm -hmm. you have to hit just barely past just. the side to have any chance to hit the one. The good thing for Federer is he's got a five nine that's, like I said, pretty ugly. Mm -hmm. Now, he could bend the ball around the 8, the top side of the 8, between the 7 and 8, and maybe have it grab off the side of rail with some right English. Ooh, that's a long way to curve, though. Yeah, but you want to go at something here. You, mm -hmm. I mean, with the 5-9, you want to try something. I thought, he, you know, for a moment there, I thought he was looking at maybe just moving the 3 and taking the foul. I think he's got to get at it somehow. Super tight. Maybe double kisses the 1 if he can see it at all. Maybe he thinks he can swerve it in behind the... Oh, no, he came on that side. Okay, he could. Yeah, double kiss the one. Anything. You know, well, anything yeah, from well, there. Well, the two had him cut off the right. The four had him cut off the left, so... Just don't give a ball in exactly. hand. It's a great shot. But the thing is, it was really touchy because you could see how, how he slow rolled it, right? Yeah. So it wasn't like a real big gap there. Now, Jeffrey, he's got to pin him on the seven here. This is a little touchy, especially when things aren't going your way. That can happen right there. Now, he did play the one nicely. Okay, so <clears throat> but that's the that thing, control. You know? Yeah, and that's where maybe thinking no jump cue, Mark. Maybe don't try to come on the seven. Just place five, six inches behind the seven, guaranteeing the snooker there with no jump cues. No, that's a good point there, too. When you know, I mean, just to get the safe. Just don't let Fetter do something with the cue ball here like this. Yeah, this <laughs> could get real ugly. Now, Perfect speed, by the now way. Now that's going to force him to potentially dislodge the five. Or, I mean, yeah, he's got to kick soft. He could come underneath and, and, and not get a rail if he comes underneath the one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is... Uh, this is kind of how the professional ranks are differences uh, between the next levels is grinding out games, uh, you know, 
kind of like uh, you didn't leave my shot, but you're right. still not going to take. You're going to have the worst of it coming back, you know. So truly, uh, you know where Gorst had to start from in that shot. It's not glamorous practice. People don't want to do it. But if you're going to play at this level, at least two thirds of your innings begin with an object ball on the end rail and your cue ball on the other end of the table. So you're going to have to defend yourself from there. It's not, you know, and it was a real wake up call for me in my first pro tournaments. Look at this hit. This is the one, no rail, maybe. Great oh, he got oh, it. He got a rail. What a shot. <laughs> Nevertheless, what I'm saying is that you don't want to practice that, but then you wait till the match where you're not as nimble at it. And these great players extract themselves from these tenuous situations, ugly, 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 and somehow they get back to the table with a shot. Well, and down the way. You know, you're not going to be able to practice all the safeties that you'll have to play when you're competing. That's just impossible. The game's too infinite. Mm -hmm. A nice little soft kick on the one here, by the way. Uh, but you and I talked about that that very safety right there. The clip on the wand from the back rail is one you need to practice. Mm -hmm. You have to have a, you know, eight or ten different ways you can hit that shot. This is that super soft Efren Reyes, two cushions. You a little want the too light, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but still not the worst, but he's going to get the worst of it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's going to introduce the cue ball to the five and nine here. And this is where when you know you're playing safe, make sure you really kind of think about how can I really jam him up here because you have a lot of opportunities. Like right here, this got away from him. Now, if the one gets on the other side of the three, that may leave a tougher kick. But, but now he's tied the five nine up again. And you know? there's no reason uh, what he was doing. You d definitely don't want to let him have access to this one ball from the side rail. Yeah. You well, I think he didn't look at the shot long enough, to be honest with you. If he cuts the one and draws into the nine, he sticks him right behind the five and everything's open. There was a little bit of fear, too. The reason he played it like this is that he was afraid that he might accidentally pocket the four down there if he does mm. stuff that cue ball on the five. But Yeah. You know, this is what you didn't want to do. The five nines tied up. <laughs> Fetter's got a one rail kick and figures to hit the ball. Yeah, that's almost the oh, difference. He okay. didn't, but. Yeah, mercifully. People always ask me what the difference when I turn to professional tournaments versus, you know, the, the, the next level down, whatever those are you want to type of tournaments those are back in the day. But I thought it was more about grinding games out, not giving games up as much. Mm -hmm. uh, getting the most out of shots a lot of times. You know, it's not like you got to get it all the time, but when it's there, yeah, you want to get the most out of it. You know, that's just the work ethic of the professional players. And <laughs> this is going to be good. He's trying underneath to tuck the three. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. Yeah, that's so difficult, though. I, is he trying to get a shot on the 10 here, maybe? I thought he was going three foul rules, but yeah. I thought he was thinking, but... Well, yeah, that's always an option as well. Maybe the one dresses up near the 10. But I thought that just tucking them underneath the, the three was pretty tough. Huh? Mm-hmm. Now, Fetter certainly a huge favorite here. This is where you just, with the 5-9, you don't want to open the 5-9, but you certainly don't want to make this kick and not get a rail. Because if the one hits the 8 just right, you never know. Yeah, I figured I'd see a lot of speed on that kick shot there. And look how good he did with the cue ball, and that was not by accident. That high ball kind of drew off the object oh, yeah. ball and killed it. And well, the kick and stick behind with the high ball, a lot of people think that, you know, the object ball has to be close, and that's not the case. You know, you can you can stop the ball. You have to hit it harder, of course, like he yeah. did. But and you have to hit it square. Oh, of course, yeah, which is tougher from distance. A little edge on the one, trying to come back behind the five nine, I guess. Okay, and pretty good shot. Effort. Yeah, he may have sold out a one three though. We'll see. That's not too tough from this distance here. I think he shoots this mark. He may shoot, shoot the one into the three and try and run the cue ball, but I think that's almost as tough as the combo. Yeah. Both are tough. Yeah. Now, mind you, this is not a. Yeah, it looks like to me again. Usually he really sizes combinations up, and he didn't do that here, so I bet he's playing safe. Yeah. Watch out, corner. <laughs> and always it seems like a little better speed than his opponent. Just a great job. <laughs> when you move the cue ball that far with that speed control, and create that direction. That is great execution. Look at this. Boy, this is absolutely hideous. 
It's just that, look at he's considering jumping, man, saying. <laughs> well, he can go by the five, it seems like, with draw to the side rail and make it come off and hit the one. But this isn't going to have much speed on it, the problem with this shot. Oh, wow, what a hit. He got a nice full hit. No no love, though. Oh, boy. Yeah, he made a great shot to, you know, give up a shot on the one. A lot of ways it could have turned out much, much better. Yeah, and Fetter's got to maybe put a bit of speed on this. Or does it naturally, because he's not going towards a scratch, is he? Or does he, can he add a little right to avoid the scratch? A little, you this know, is funny. Yeah, exactly right. Because if you hit that pocket thicker or thinner, it, it could easily rattle the pocket, scratch in the pocket, or avoid the pocket. Yeah, he put a little right to make that hit on the one to where the cue ball just kind of, you know, kind of jerks a little right off the ball. You know how English does that, right? So just a little kind of like a makes a little ricochet, a little bounce to avoid that scratch. Straight draw here? No, I don't know. It's a, th it's a thinner hit than what we're thinking for sure. And I think yeah. he has to go into the three four, so I think he's just gonna pace this soft speed type of thing. Wow. Okay. Well now he's queuing up as if he's gonna do something. Maybe he is drawing he yeah. might just be drawing behind yeah. Oh just, he didn't he, even go he's for not it. even right. Wow. No, because it just laid so treacherous and he no, felt I comfortable get it, yeah. to get here. Now he can have you know, if Jeffrey hits this, there's a great likelihood that he frees up to five and the nine. To, you know, it's going to be hard to get separation here. I'd have to roll across and try to make this one rail cross behind the seven myself with a lighter speed. Um, I'm like you. This has got a good chance of opening up the ball with the cue ball or the two, either one. Now he may end up getting a snooker. It's real close. Yeah, not bad. So he can fault him on this. He, he may might. Have an edge. Yeah. Three does pass the four. Well, I think the cut shot is in play. And nothing against Jeffrey. Of course, he has some fans in the stands. But what's happening with Federer is there's a lot of people that don't get to get out to a lot of pool tournaments a year. and They're here for the Derby, and they want to make sure they get as much look as Federer as they can. Well, look how many of the pro players are in the stands. Absolutely. Here, right? yeah. Absolutely. Chris Robinson, Reinhold, uh, there's Tyler Steyer. Yeah, but it's kind of like to that point, you know, you never know when you're going to see something really special. As mm -hmm. a, and, and not just a shot, like some players you may want to mm -hmm. watch. Oh, I don't want to miss him if this kind of shot comes up or that kind of situation. But it's more or less like the perfect match we're waiting on from Federer or something like that. Right. Well, I mean, like the Holy this. Grail. A 932 in rack number 10 is, that's something special. 10-foot yeah. table, four and an eighth-inch pocket. And this got funny here. I mean, he's a little for awkward queuing. He's not quite thin enough to make back and forth that easy, and he's not quite heavy enough to really easily hold. So this is the type of shot that the, if he needs to queue it more than just straight high, okay, he's got easy queuing. I, I thought he was more over the seven mark. Yeah, you see how he overcut the four mm -hmm. to the pocket to help the uh, movement of the cue ball? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's Danny Louie. we got a whole room full of greats. Yeah, I went up to Seattle not long ago, and unluckily uh, Danny was out of town. Dan Louie. He's a great guy. Yeah, he cracks me up every time I talk to him, it seems like. Super nice guy, too. Not going to do a whole lot here. We well, got a whole lot out of it, though. Just a one rail stun catching the second rail. And this is kind of those shots we talked about before to where he gets the timing so nice. He gets a real nice release on the cue ball without having to really hit it that hard. Like here, he's a little high with the tip. Watch the tip come down just a little bit at impact. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> Look how clean that is. Uh, I could have drew that on paper and had the cue ball would have landed right where I was drawing for ideal. Yeah, now 
9-1 lead and breaking on game number 11. Raise that CPA now. Ed Orgore is putting on a show. 9-1. to one. Sneaking up to 940 again. He's breaking as we head into rack 11. <clears throat> Over the last year, you, you have to respect and admire Feder's efforts because he came here last year. He wins about eighty thousand this week, at the, which is unheard of at the Derby. Great, and then all of a sudden now he's forbidden from playing the big events for you know two thirds of the year thereafter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really complain. I mean, he made a couple of sarcastic jokes about he's a bar table specialist, you know. But it, we know. I mean, and then here he is. He's applied for citizenship, and you give up your country, you know. I mean, well, that's tremendous commitment. And, Nothing but the hats off for this guy. I, I wish we had tons of people like him in our sport. Yeah, I think uh, I think our sport has got a lot of greats, and but I think you're going to see more of them coming, like Fetter Gorse. And One time I asked him when he was 18, "How how do you get so good?" He told me that there's in Northern Europe there's kids tournaments, hundred kids a month come. He said, and he wasn't talking about himself. He goes. There's six of these kids that are going to be world champions. Yeah. And he was talking about the guys that we're now seeing from Poland. And sure. Those other, I mean, but and then there's more coming behind these guys. Like, whoa, this is really good for our sport. Yeah, going after it here. Looks like it's a little thick. It's going to slide in. Ooh. Good speed on the cue ball for the two in the side. A really good job. Yeah, he's going to have to work the ball a little bit off the three to the four, it looks like. The five's near, though, so he can handle a little cut shot on the four. Don't know this angle on the two. It may be heavier than what I think it is to where he, he can just draw straight off the three instead of having to use a, a cushion. Oh, yeah, he can. That's what he's going to do here. Yeah, he even got more out of that than I think he thought he was going to get. Yeah. There's something about those shots I'm going to pick your brain this week about, Mark, and I'm glad we're rooming together. Tip position is a fascinating thing, I, you know, and I think it really matters with strokes, different types of techniques, how you hit the ball and stuff like that. But, um, of course, the guys who hit the ball better get the most out of the less tip position and whatnot. But I think Fetter kind of opened my eyes on some things. How he simplifies his tip position at times and doesn't go center ball all the time. That's not what I mean, but mm -hmm. just when he does go off of center, that's where his real efficiency is, in my opinion. Unnecessary English, if you want to call it that. What I've marveled at is guys like uh, top tier players now. Even for mid-range, they're manipulating the pocket so they can avoid using side spin, the inconsistencies that come with side spin, and they can just go up to down the vertical axis and just cheat the pocket, get the angle, control the speed easier because you're not squirting a little bit and hitting the pocket funny. Well, that's the, the word that I really like you attach that with is the speed of it. Uh, that That's where, because I don't really, when people ask me about shooting to a part of the pocket or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, whether it's a ball in the way a little bit or, like you said, using the pocket uh, to manufacture. I don't really think we're good enough to dissect aiming-wise to a portion unless maybe we're really close. But the gut instinct that these guys have shooting to just a portion of the pocket, in, mm -hmm. in my mind, is incredible. Because uh, I think you just got to trust what you see mm -hmm. you know, and then deliver a committed stroke, of course. But, but like I always bring up Dennis's name. Dennis will do it even when he doesn't need to, just because it's kind of like he's so good at it, cheating mm -hmm. the pocket. So. He plays so much pool. Sometimes I think he likes to challenge himself. That's what I you mean, know? Mike. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like entertaining thing. more. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like, just so I don't get bored, I'm going to still yeah. do this. Oh, you're still here? I'm doing this over here. And same thing with Fetter. Just kind of out there by himself. Playing great and on the hill. Third break and run out of the set. Ten games to one. Puts himself Leads by on the nine. Hill. Ten to one. As we go into rack 12.
you know, the team behind uh, Fedor too, Alan and Jason Sword, you really have to credit them. They recognize right away the character of the athlete as opposed to the skill set of the athlete. Recognized it right away, and they reap uh, rewards, but they've contributed heavily to his success. And then you got the guy that's got the disciplined work ethic, which was what they require. Here you have, you know, an absolute beast. Dominated the Derby last year, and he's on his way to doing so in the first match this year. Yeah, I think he's, you know, the favorite as far as if you want to talk about who's going to be the top money earner come the end of this 2023 Derby. And definitely commending the Soar brothers and how they've helped Fetter. I think, like you said, Fetter's such a great guy and a keen mind. He would have found his way mm-hmm. just, just because he wasn't going to be denied, and he's still not going to be denied. That's right. Just, that's just kind of how it is. And the thing about Fetter is he doesn't really even have to remind himself of that. He's gotten himself in, in such a yeah. good place that, uh, yeah, that I think he enjoys every bit of what he's doing. No let up whatsoever from him. Yeah. It's forthcoming. Nothing easy here after a great break off. Yeah. The most balls we've seen made and now elevated some eight feet away. Yep. And with a lot of traffic and not much angle, we may see a little something special from Jeffrey with this score line the way it is because he can do some special things that, that most of us can't when it comes to really powering the ball. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing something special from him anyways. All right, this one might really get in the air and then kind of draw after bouncing a few times. Yeah, a little a la Corey Duell from the U.S. Open years ago. I don't know if you remember that shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember it, Corey's draw in the Moscone yeah. Cup that took angles I've never seen. Oh, I, was at the, I yeah. was on that team. I remember that one really well. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I, when he was rolling out, I think I was in the stands with Nick, I think, if I remember. Because me and Nick really spent a lot of time together during a, a few of those those Moscones. And I, I, Nick asked me, what's he doing? You know, just kind of like not asked me, but just kind of mm-hmm. said it out loud, you know. And I said I knew what he was doing just because I had spent some time with the uh, old crazy Corey, you know, <laughs> in the best way possible. I say crazy. Yeah. But uh, he envisioned some things and. What an incredible talent uh, Corey was when he was a young man. Still incredible talent, of course. Now, what happened there, he got a little topspin on that, and that arced it and took the pace out of the mass, so it didn't take the right angles. He needed to hit the cue ball a little lower with that inside spin and the bridge. You know, that's why I'm not crit- discrediting. I'm just saying that's what happened. I thought he may take a chance digging on the cue ball, trying to zigzag between the 7-4, just because he wasn't that thin on it, really. I think that's why it hugged on him, really, uh, mm-hmm. because he wasn't as thin on the ball as he probably would have liked. Well, this is the worst nice shot. shot. Uh, I don't think the bridge helped him any. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the shot I was talking about kind of like earlier. Yeah. You know, you can't try to play the three all the way down. you got to recognize where you just yeah. got to play the cue ball at times. And this cue ball responded the way you said yeah. uh, when he was up close. It checked better. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's got a pocket or no? It's close. No, he had to overcut it. Jeffrey, though, not giving in. Uh-uh, and a really no nice give up. shot here. No give up. Beauty. Good job. And I think he got a snooker here, at least a portion. Maybe not the entire ball. Well, he's looking kind of straight at it, so that's the two rail angle he's looking at now. And the thing is about this, you know, most of the guys don't really know, like, a system as far as, like, the diamonds. They don't really use that that often. Mm-mm. What they do is they go give themselves a little direction looking at things, really kind of give them the brain a little information, and then go from there. And just a lot of hours of knowing what's going on mm-hmm. makes them figure it out. And then their speed, you know, like the medium speed. This one may be a hair under medium. Again, I don't try to get the three all the way down. That opens up the scratch in my mind, underneath the three, two rails. So you want to hit it solid, just bank the three, one rail above the seven, I think. Yeah, see how light the speed is, Mark? That that way you avoid that scratch right there. If you hit mm-hmm. it with speed, it hugs the rail mm-hmm. and goes right on in. 
Boy, what a good result that was from an awkward two-rail kick. <laughs> now he's got him end rail to end rail. Yeah, and what people don't realize also is when you come that second rail, you get a, a little bit of an immediate bounce effect off the, off the rail to where it puts a little more pace on the object ball than you really expect. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, until you learn better, they overhit it a little bit trying to move that object ball and don't realize <laughs> the rail's kind of your friend. And then they scratch because yeah. you know, the cue ball hugs the rail. Look at this. This is going to be treacherous as could be. Yeah. Just kind of felt like, you know. When you're forced to play a shot at that distance, at that speed, and if it goes even one millimeter awry, it sells out like this, and you feel so dumb because now you just give it away. You know? Yeah. But th he felt like that was the highest percentage play, not faulting him. No, the three got froze. and Just kind of felt like the three would, if he tried to play off the right side and run the cue ball with a froze three, it would come up the table with the cue ball a little bit. You know, you have to hit it so perfect when the ball's froze. If you just catch it a shade thick, it kind of wants to react to, like you caught it a lot thick. What do you think here, Mark? This is a little awkward. He can you know, come I back behind it, right? Yeah, I think it's, it's two cushions, side rail, side rail, and then play the five either in the side that uh, is nearest or in the far corner. Yeah, and, you know, if the seven wasn't there, it would be a little different, right. of course. But uh, here he gets to commit. Um, to that nice medium stroke he likes. Little tip position. Watch him go down with the low right tip. Yeah, really nice. Caught it a little thin, so he's not going to get by the five. Not perfect, but manageable. Yeah, and what he's, happened there, he just didn't get to hold his finish a little bit, I think, you know. When, when he slightly overcut it, it thinned up everything. Now, the spin didn't grab as much as he was anticipating. That's why he didn't drop below the five. He ended up hitting the high side of the five. Yeah, and why I brought up the finish is when you have to get the cue stick out of the way, right, because the cue ball is coming right back at your cue. Yeah. Sometimes you don't go through the ball quite as much, so you don't cause as much deflection with yeah. that low right. And so you, when you don't deflect as much, a lot of times you'll catch the ball a little thin to the pocket. Good shot, good recovery. Except a little longer, didn't need to be close, just wanted the angle. And again, if you want to really learn something from this guy, notice unless it's really, you know, important or mandatory, he really likes to stay with that medium stroke a lot. So he picks out a lot of patterns that agree with that as well. You know, when you're on the fence for the choice, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Again, like right here, same stroke as the last, just pulling the cue ball to the side rail. And what a performance. Oh, my. Well, he's 9.37. I was wondering if I would have taken the over when it was 9.33 at 6 to 1, I believe it was. I don't yeah. think I would have bet the under. I don't know. I'd hate to go down betting against this guy. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to fall down, though. I mean, it's hard I know, to that's stay what up I mean. there. That's why I said it. It's, it's set up for you to go downward right. when you start out like that. Right. But, you know, right. not for Fetter Gorst. And what an incredible win. Match balls. Yeah. <laughs> what a performance. Well, nothing to say. This is by far the best match of day one. <laughs> we got eight more days of excitement. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. On behalf of AccuStats, Mark Wilson, Jeremy Jones, good night, drive safely, and so long for just a while.